How's it going everybody? Noah with Madison Angling and today we are sitting in my boat not fishing but we are going to talk about something that I get a lot of questions about uh, both on videos as well as emails and Facebook messages and that is talking about these guys. Dipsy divers. We're going to talk a little bit about dipsy divers today. I'm going to show you how I set up my dipsies and uh, just kind of give you the general run through. If you're new to salmon fishing or new word of salmon fishing, uh, you guys need to use dipsy divers. I'm telling you, they are probably the most effective line that I put out in a big spread of lines, more so than my lead cores, coppers, downriggers, uh, weapon rigs, pump handles, depending on where you're from. Uh, Dipsy is just straight up catch fish. So I'm gonna run through some of the basics. I'll show you guys what I use, how I set them up, and hopefully you guys can take some of this and go catch a whole bunch more trout and salmon this year, uh, especially if you're new to this. In fact, I would argue if you are new to salmon fishing, you don't have downriggers, you don't have lead cores and coppers, all you need to go out and catch fish, guys, is this. All you need are dipsy divers. You can run a spread of dipsies and catch a bunch of fish. So with that, let's dive in and start talking about these guys. All right, so fundamentally, what is a dipsy diver, right? It, it's just like this disc, there's all different sizes and colors. We got the magnums, we got kind of our standard size dipsies. We even got these little mini dipsy divers. What is a dipsy diver? What does it do? So essentially, for anybody who's not familiar, a dipsy diver is this plastic disc, and on the bottom of this disc is a weight. And I can actually adjust this weight based on where it is in the center line of the dipsy diver. So. In this case, I have this dipsy, if I put a little tension on it, you can see that it kind of wants to hang down like this. So I actually have this one set up for the port side of the boat. So when I put this in the water, it's actually gonna plane out to the left side. So essentially, that's what a dipsy diver is, guys. It's basically an underwater planer board that pulls your lines out to the side of the boat and also pulls them down. The whole goal with all of these different rigs that we use for salmon fishing is to get our lines to a certain depth in the water column where the fish are hanging out. And dipsy divers are a great way to both get the line to dive, but also plane it out to the side and make room for other lines. So basically, the, the function of this is an underwater planer board, okay? And the way this thing works is real simple. So we do have that weight on the bottom. That weight is adjustable based on which way you want this dipsy to go. So right now it's set up to plane off to the left side or the port side of the boat. Uh, I could set it to basically loosen this little screw here and slide it to the other side. Now it wants to hang this way, right? That's gonna work on the right side of the boat. So these are directional. You don't wanna set this on a right-hand setting and put it on the left side of the boat. It's gonna go under the boat and it's gonna be a problem. So make sure you double check to make sure that this is set for the correct side of the boat. Or if you're not using downriggers or you don't have downriggers, you can also set this on a zero setting. So generally, most dipsy divers run through um, a series of numbers up to three and a half. So if you hear people talking about dipsies and they say, I was running it with 150 feet of line on the counter, so 150 feet of line off the reel on a two and a half setting, they're referring to the numbered dashes. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but these numbered dashes on here that indicate the setting, all right? So generally they're anywhere from zero to three, three and a half for the settings. On a zero setting, you can see how it doesn't have any any lean to it, it's just straight up and down. On a zero setting, this will act just like a downrigger and it'll pull the line straight down. So that's where I was saying before, you don't need downriggers if you're getting into this. You can just use dipsy divers and you can run lines straight down and you can run lines out to the side and have just as effective, if not in some cases, more effective spreads than you would with a downrigger. All right, so as far as the actual moving parts of a dipsy diver are concerned, uh, there's really not a whole lot. So obviously we have our weight that's adjustable that's gonna dictate which side of the boat it's gonna plane off on, or if we want it to just go straight down. And then we also have this little arm right here, and this is what actually engages and disengages the dipsy diver. So right now, this dipsy is disengaged. If I put this in the water, it's not really gonna do much of anything. It's not gonna dive real hard, it's not gonna plane, it's just gonna hang there. So what we do is we actually snap this little arm into place and it should make an audible click when it snaps into place here. And now when I put some tension on it, see the angle in the dipsy? It wants to pull down. Now it wants to dive. So when you're snapped in place, your dipsy's ready to go. When you get a fish, <laughs> the arm will pop off. It'll disengage the dipsy. Now it doesn't want to dive anymore. And that's all adjustable based on this little set screw right here. 
that actually kind of pinches the plastic together against this little piece of wire that kind of holds it all together here. So you do want to play with the tension on that. You don't want this thing so tight that when a fish grabs it, it can't pop the dipsy. If it doesn't pop the dipsy, not only are you fighting the dipsy and the fish, but the fish is also fighting the dipsy instead of fighting the rod which is a really, really, really good way to lose fish or potentially even break off equipment if you hook a really big fish. So you wanna make sure you set these just tight enough that, you know, with, with the pull, let's say you got a, you know, we're running a big old, you know, flasher fly on there fishing for kings. Um, you wanna make sure that there's enough, um, enough give in this release here that when a fish hits it, it can actually trip the dipsy and swim off with it. Now, there could be a little trial and error with that. I, I usually set mine a little bit light. Um, sometimes they'll just pop on their own if you hit a wave or something or the boat speeds up or something. There's a surge, right? And there's a big pull on it. Sometimes that surge will set the dipsy off. Um, if, if that continues to happen, then I'll gradually tighten this little set screw on here until I get it to the point where it only trips when we get bit. So that's a really important key with these dipsy divers. Another one you may be noticing on the back end of this guy is this little rubber band here. I got one on my, uh, where is it here? On my, my Magnum dipsy diver here too. And this is called a snubber and it's basically a bungee cord. That's essentially what this thing is. So on the inside, there's some kind of heavy line, whether it's wire or mono, and it's surrounded by surgical tubing on, on this one. So this is a Lure Jensen brand snubber. Uh, and the guy I have here, this clear one I actually get from uh, Howie Tackle or Howie's up in uh, up in Sturgeon Bay. So Howie Flies, same brand, same company, um, but they also make these these snubbers. They both work just fine. Does it have to be clear? No. Does it have to be yellow? Does it have to be red? No. Pick a color. I don't think the fish really care all that much. But essentially, that is our shock absorber. That is what's doing a lot of the work. So why do you have to have a snubber? Why do you have to have a shock absorber? The biggest reason is based on the line that we're using and the fact that when a salmon hits a rod, they hit it really, really hard, okay? Especially if it's a big fish. If it's a big four-year-old king, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on there. You have to have something that stretches. Now, we'll talk about line and stuff here in just a second, but my leader stretches and my snubber stretches, but my main line doesn't, and that's really important. So make sure you have a snubber on here. You have to have a shock absorber, otherwise you're gonna be breaking off a lot of gear. Okay, so that's kind of the, the basic rundown on dipsy divers themselves. And there's, there's a bunch of different sizes out there. There's also slide divers uh, that operate very similar to a dipsy. Uh, however, when they disengage, they actually slide down the line, which is kind of cool. There's certain advantages to using slide divers uh, over a regular dipsy. Um, but generally, the, the two main sizes I'm using, I like the Magnum dipsy divers. This is the biggest size you can get. Um, big, giant disc, uh, real heavy weight on it. These are designed to fish really deep and I run these on my wire divers, which I'll talk about here in a second. And then kind of the standard sized um, dipsy diver. You'll notice these two are the same color. I just kind of like this UV crush tape. I, it honestly doesn't matter. I have green ones, orange ones, red ones, uh, fire tiger ones. The, the color I don't think really makes that big of a difference. Just pick something that looks good. The fish aren't really looking at the dipsy. They're looking at everything behind it. So, um, but yeah, for my, my general purpose stuff for my braid, um, my braid dipsies, I run just kind of my, my standard dipsy diver here, and then I run the Magnum on my wire divers, the ones that I want to get really, really deep. So as far as my, my rods go, uh, like I mentioned, there's really no stretch in this system, so that's why having a snubber is super important. And the reason is, on my braid dipsies, I'm running 65 pound braid. Um, generally speaking, anywhere from 50 to 65 is, is perfect. Um, I know people who run 30 pound braid on their dipsies. That kind of scares me a little bit, to be honest. Now, if you're fishing for cohos, if you have specific rods set up just for, you know, high lines for cohos, 30 is plenty, that works just fine. But if you're dealing with big fish, especially four-year-old kings or big lake trout, um, 50 to 60 pound braid, 65 pound braid works great. Um, I've got that on a Okuma Convector. That is a 45, which is a big old reel, holds a lot of line. And it's important to have a bunch of line on here. I think I have, probably close to, I want to say 400 or 500 yards of line on here. Uh, big fish take big runs. So you want to make sure you have plenty of line and, and generally the dipsies are probably the most effective rod in the spread. So make sure you have these things set up properly. Um, so we got the Convector 45D for the reel. Uh, the drag on these is awesome. They have a really loud clicker. So when the rod goes off, even if it's not a big fish, you'll hear it go off. And when these things are set, 
uh, I, I want to make sure that the drag is set light enough that as we're trolling, it's not just peeling line out freely, but it's, it's light enough that when you get a fish, there is some give to it. So that just takes a little bit of timing and a little bit of playing around. Uh, but I like the clicker on these. They're super loud. The drags are really nice and smooth and we have high line capacity and they pick up line really quick. So if you have a fish charging at you, it's perfect. So the Convector 45Ds, uh, I've got these on a 10 foot medium heavy rod, um, something that has a fair amount of backbone to it. And you may be wondering, why am I using a 10 footer? Do you have to use a 10 footer? Absolutely not. You can get away with pretty much whatever you wanna use. Uh, but I use a 10 footer because I double stack dipsy divers. And I'll, I'll show you what that means here in a second when we talk about the wire dipsies. Uh, but essentially on the business end of these, I run a cross lock snap, just the same, actually the same thing I run on most of my musky leaders. And I've got this little, I believe this is a nine millimeter rubber bead um, you can get on Amazon for super cheap. This one actually glows in the dark. And I put that on there so that way when we're actually fighting fish, uh, we typically reel the dipsy all the way to the tip of the rod because we're running pretty long leaders. Uh, anywhere from 10 to 12, even sometimes a 15 foot long leader. Uh, as Lake Michigan's cleared up over the years, it seems like the fish get a little more line shy. So running long leaders is really advantageous. So that's where having a 10 foot rod is also nice because you have 10 feet of leverage you can lift up on that line and bring the fish in closer to the boat. Uh, and then I have that rubber stopper on there uh, so that way you can reel the dipsy right up to the tip of the rod and not damage the guide. So that's a real important tip. So now as we're getting a little more technical here, we, we know the basics of dipsies, kind of how they work, how they function and how the braid dipsies are set up. Let's talk about wire. This is a new one for me this year. Uh, I've ran wire dipsies before, uh, but I got all set up with new wire stuff this year. Uh, we're running the same reel here, guys, Convector 45D. Um, right-handed reel because I'm I'm right-handed and uh, the rods and the line here are a little bit different all right so a wire dipsy what is a wire dipsy it is literally wire line this is blood run um, trolling wire I believe it is I want to say 40 pound breaking strength I'm not totally sure on that but it is literally a braided stainless steel wire and the reason we use this is because it actually cuts through the water a little bit better than braid does. So it's a little thinner diameter and it can get your line down a little bit deeper. So that is where I'm running my Magnum Dipsy Diver. This is the one that I'm gonna get down real deep. So the wire does a good job of that. It also um, makes some kind of this like hum, this vibration in the water that seems to attract salmon. So um, I don't know the logistics behind that. I don't know if that's real, but that seems to be the consensus. Uh, and these things do get absolutely hammered. Next to a braid Dipsy, these things get crushed. They don't work so well for cohos. They like the, the braid dipsies better, but for kings, wire dipsies are absolutely killer. So we have the same reel on here. I've got my blood run uh, stainless steel wire and the rod is pretty important. So this is a Okuma white diamond trolling rod. Um, there are specific models for wire divers uh, that have a really cool tip on them that's designed to swivel and pivot and um, essentially you don't want to kink this wire okay if you get kinks in this you're going to weaken it and then you can break everything off so you're losing your dipsy if you have a flasher fly on there you're losing all your gear so you want to make sure that you have the right tip on the rod so on this one um, i specifically bought rods that did not have the wire diver tip instead i put a twilly tip on here these guys are really cool you can get these at most uh, great lakes tackle shops it's basically a stainless steel spring that replaces the end of your rod here the tip top guide you just melt that off super glue this guy on and it's a spring and it can flex and rotate so that way when you are reeling in the wire you're not reeling it against a hard 90 degree surface which can kink the wire damage it and you can lose fish that way the other thing that's important is you got to have solid metal guides so these white diamond rods have solid metal guides instead of something that has ceramic inserts like my braids my braid dipsy rods do and the reason is pretty simple. You've got stainless steel wire rubbing around inside of the guides. That's a really, really good way to damage your guides. So eventually, yeah, they'll, they'll work just fine with a, a softer insert, like a ceramic insert, but eventually this braid, this braided wire is gonna act like a chainsaw and it's gonna zip right through those inserts. It's gonna destroy them. Eventually it's gonna destroy your wire. And this is not cheap. It is not cheap to get set up with wire divers. So make sure you set it up right. So these white diamond rods, I will have them linked in the description below, as long as with pretty much all these other products I'm talking about, um, these are absolutely perfect. Now I went with a little bit lighter rod. This is actually a medium, uh, which is not necessarily 
the, the norm for a wire, wire diver. So what I mean by that is since we're, we're pulling a, a Magnum Dipsy diver, this thing's big and it pulls really, really hard. And we may have, you know, our, our flasher fly down there, an eight inch paddle like this. We may even use like an 11 inch fish blade, something real big. Um, there's a lot of force on this rod, but the reason I went with the lighter rod on here is so it actually bends a whole bunch. Um, so that's for where I'm, where I'm double stacking Dipsy. All right, so double stacking Dipsy divers, what does that mean? It means exactly what it sounds like it means. It means we're running two Dipsy divers on each side of the boat. And that might sound a little bit complicated and might sound like something that's gonna get really tangled up real easy. And it, and it, it can if you don't set it up properly. So generally speaking, my braid Dipsy diver, my, my regular Dipsy diver here, I'm gonna have up higher and I'm gonna have it on a higher setting. Meaning that I'm gonna be running it at like a two, two and a half, three, three and a half. I want this thing to plane way off to the side and get way the heck away from my other lines. I still want it to dive, but I want it out of the way. I want that one to act more like a planer board and, and less like something that really dives super deep. And then right next to it, I'm gonna run my deep running Dipsy Diver. I'm gonna run the Magnum. This one I'm gonna run more, more or less straight down and just a little off to the side. This one I'm gonna run far more off to the side. So let's pretend I got these set here and they're both on the right side of the boat. I'm gonna have my Magnum Dipsy down here at a little bit of an angle. My Braid Dipsy is gonna be up a little bit higher and obviously they're a lot closer than I'd actually be in the water here. But this one's gonna be a little further down and a little bit off to the side. This one's gonna be up higher and way further off to the side. That way they're not in each other's way. So the, the whole idea is that we've got one that's hanging out deep, one that's hanging out a little higher and there's enough space between them, especially if you're fishing deep. You know, let's say I've got 150 feet of, of line out on my wire diver on a one or one and a half setting. That sucker is way down there. It, it could be 60, 70 feet down. I mean, it could be way, way, way down, even a little bit further than that versus my, my braid dipsy that I might have at like a two and a half, three, three and a half setting with 140 feet of line out. That one might only be getting down about 50 feet or so. Um, the, and for, for information on the dive charts, that actually says it right on the package of the Dipsy Divers, which is kind of nice. What size it is, what setting it's at, how many feet of line out, it gives you an idea of where that thing's running. And, and in time, as you do more and more of this, you kind of figure out your own numbers, things that you seem to, to like to run based on where you're seeing fish on the graph, numbers that seem to work on your, your wire diver or your braid Dipsy. Do you need a wire diver? Absolutely not. You could go out with a braid, dipsy and just smash fish all season long. Uh, the wire divers are a little more specific. Um, generally, I'm looking for king salmon with those, um, sometimes lake trout, but that is my, I wanna get down real stinking deep rod. And uh, and like I mentioned before, I wanna have a lot of flex on this rod for, my, for me personally. Uh, you know, I'm fishing out of a, a 20 and a half foot boat. I don't have a ton of space in here to, to run a ton of stuff. So my, my medium power wire diver rod has a big bend in it, which kind of helps the wire, or sorry, the, the braid diver rod. And I have a picture I'm gonna show you guys here of, of kind of how this looks. Um, but I have my, my braid diver rod um, further ahead in the boat, my wire diver, and then my downrigger. So that wire diver rod has a much steeper bend to it versus my, my braid rod. So the tips can kind of clear each other. So if my braid goes off, it starts bending, it doesn't hit my wire diver rod, my wire diver goes off, it's not running into my braid or my, my downrigger. So it all kind of fits together. That's what works well for me and my boat. Uh, but generally you're working with a medium heavy rod on those. Um, so also, why, why braid? Can I use mono? Can I use fluorocarbon for my main line? Don't do that. that that's how people used to do it. Um, there's just too much stretch. The hooking percentage isn't awesome. There's too much stretch, especially if your Dipsy is set um, too tight. If, if this thing's set too tight to pop and you're yanking on it, yanking on it, and you have 20, 25, 30 pound mono, not to mention the line diameter, not letting this thing dive as deep as it, it could, um, you're not gonna be able to pop this thing. And that's a really good way to lose fish. So having a non-stretch line, whether you're running the, the stainless wire or your 50 to 65 pound braid, that is what's gonna make this system work. So don't do that. Make sure that you're not running mono. You can run mono for your leader. You know, like I said, anywhere from 10 to 15 feet or so of, of 20 to even upwards of 30 pound mono, depending on what I'm doing. If I'm pulling um, lots of flasher flies and that's specifically what I'm doing, I'm gonna to go to a 30 pound mono. Uh, if I'm running spoons, I'll run 20 to 25 pound mono, something a little bit lighter. Um, 
but that's that's kind of the gist of of how I like to set these up. Uh, and as far as time of year goes, you can fish dipsies all year. We start out with these uh, early summer and spring for trout and coho salmon. And as things kind of progress into the summer, we start running into kings, steelhead, lakers. Uh, these things catch everything. You can literally go out by yourself with three dipsy divers, one, one on the left, one on the right, and one straight out the back on a zero setting and go out and absolutely smash fish. So anyway, guys, I know this wasn't a fishing video, but I at least wanted to touch a little bit on dipsy divers, kind of how they work, how I like to set these up. And it is hands down my absolute favorite technique for targeting salmon. Most of the fish we catch are usually on dipsies. Um, you know, yeah, we run coppers and lead cores, weapon rigs, or pump handles, depending on uh, where you're from, and obviously downriggers, but day in and day out, if I had one setup to take out on the Great Lakes with me for trout and salmon, it is day in and day out going to be a dipsy diver. So anyway, guys, hopefully this cleared up a little bit of questions on, um, on dipsies, kind of how they work, what they do, and how I have these set up. And if you guys have questions, please comment below. Or if you set your dipsies up differently, share that with everybody in the comments. There's so many different ways you can rig these. Uh, there's really no wrong way as long as it works. Uh, but that's kind of my, my general run through on dipsy divers, how they work. And uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content, guys, feel free to subscribe. Uh, you know, I'm not putting out videos as often as I used to, uh, but I'm trying to make them a little bit more teachable, right? I, I'm not just taking you on an adventure. I want to explain what we're doing here. So my goal is to share what I've learned over many, many years of fishing with you guys so you guys can go out and have some fun and be successful on the water. So let's keep this thing rolling, guys. Please consider hitting the subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like, and I'll see you guys soon on another video. Thanks. Mm -hmm.